Hello and welcome to our EV meeting. Here you can see who is presenting tonight. It's a very long presentation or uh, meeting, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing or listen to it, just pick out what you want to look and listen to. Okay, so here's the agenda for tonight. Down, yeah, so there's our plan. <clears throat> and do we have, uh, is Ben here yet? No. Okay, so we'll pass this down and do Ben later. Um, John, you want to come on up and we'll boot up your presentation? So we have John Grinrod coming up, and he's going to be taking uh, us through a new program from SMUD that is part of a real master plan for EV promotion, and SMUD is really one of the leaders in the United States. I mean, we really may take for granted what we have here in Sacramento, but it is exceptional. It is far from the norm, and SMUD is an amazing organization. John leads the EV program for SMUD. So let me ask you there, and I'll find your slides. Thanks, George. <coughs> so uh, glad to be with you guys again tonight. And um, I, I, there's a bag. It looks like it got stuck over on the table there. Just a bunch of little freebies, stuff that we give out at, um, at um, events. But there's some USBs and some little things to, uh, for your, your power plug things and uh, to charge your phone. <laughs> what do they call it? <laughs> power port. I was going to say cigarette lighter, but it's <laughs> not politically correct anymore, right? Um, that's what they were when I was growing up. And some things to hold your cell phone and the air conditioner vent and that kind of stuff. I uh, I brought uh, one of these. I was I brought two things that were that were given out and uh, will be uh, given out at the ride and drive that maybe someone else is going to talk about. Uh, these are actually uh, Kleenex here, and I was deciding whether I should give them to George as for all the tears he's going to shed for uh, leaving as the president or if I should give it to Peter for all the tears he's going to have so I think we'll give him to, to Peter George you get the that's another little thing you put on your dashboard will be given I only I only brought a couple of those but they um, keep your phone from sliding off and I'm betting with George lead foot that won't work I, <laughs> I've ridden with him in his uh, ludicrous mode a few times um, so I'm really here to talk about uh, a, kind of a new offering that, uh, that uh, SMUD is uh, engaging in uh, to promote electric vehicles in, uh, in the Sacramento region. Uh, for, um, probably most of you are aware, but uh, SMUD is the electric utility in Sacramento County. So pretty much all of Sacramento County, tiny little sliver, a couple of neighborhood blocks in Placer County too. Um, so we're really trying to promote EVs here in, in our area. And so we have uh, what, we, what we refer to as our dealer engagement program. This is brand new. We really even haven't even kicked off yet um, in terms of, of going out with the dealers. But we have contracted with Plug in America through a, um, through a uh, RFP process, request for proposal. We, we received uh, various requests, and the bid uh, was won by Plug in America. A um, couple folks that are involved with that, uh, Heath Carney um, is, is part of that contract, and you know, Phil Hopped is mentioned in it too, um, in, the, in the contract as subcontractors. Um, so it's a kind of a collaboration between, uh, between several entities. But the bottom line to what we're trying to do is, how, how many are familiar with that uh, Sierra Club? Uh, I don't know what you would call it. It wasn't really a study, but... Uh, where they went out to, what was this, three or four years ago? and you tried to buy cars? Yeah, well, they yeah, tried to buy a car all around the country. They went out. Secret shopper, kind of, Secret yeah. shopper yeah. kind of thing. Everybody from, anybody familiar with that? Okay, yeah. some folks. Well, they went out. They, they just did this secret thing. Where they, all, all around the country, they had people go into car dealerships and try to get information on an electric vehicle. So they had, you know, a broad spectrum of responses from, you know, places that were knowledgeable and were able to, to help. But in the vast majority of cases, they would find things like literally cobwebs, you know, on the tires to the ground on the electric vehicle. If there was more than, more than one, maybe it would be on, on all of them. Dead batteries, flat tires, sales staff that had no idea what to do with an electric vehicle, how to talk about it. Or anything else. So this happened all around the country, probably a little bit less in California, 
Um, there was a New York Times article that, that uh, kind of uh, uh, drove at the same point. And uh, you know, when it's all done, somebody can keep the bag if you want. Uh, uh, but but uh, the bottom line is, you know, uh, for a lot of folks, if you wanted an EV, you had to go on and you had to sell the salesperson on allowing you to buy the thing because they would try to sell you a gas vehicle. Uh, so that's been kind of the state of, of things. Not in Sacramento and certainly not at Cooney, of course. But um, uh, what we're trying to do is to fill that gap with our dealer engagement program by providing some of these services I'm going to talk about. Really, the, the core of it is dealer sales staff training uh, in the unique aspects of EVs. Everybody here, almost everybody here, has an EV, and everybody's interested in EVs. So you know the questions that you had early on, you know, how does this thing work, where do I charge it, uh, is there infrastructure, what if I run out of my battery runs dead? Anybody know the answer? Same thing as if you run out of gas. <laughs> so um, you call a tow truck. Um, but but there's there are lots of questions and, you know, selling an EV and purchasing an EV, driving an EV is a little bit different than a gas engine. And, and uh, what we have found is that a lot of times at the dealer level, there's a, a real gap in the knowledge on how to talk to customers about purchasing EV, from from the from the charging questions to the you know, how much does this cost uh, to drive, um, what are they uh, you know what kind of incentives people know that maybe there's incentives but they don't know maybe that there's ten thousand dollars incentives what the utility incentives are that their utility breaks so we're gonna we've hired uh, plug, plug in America to go out and do that training to recruit. Um, dealers around our area to go out and provide that training. Um, part of that will also be a, an EV incentive program. So for the dealer sales staff and for the dealerships themselves, we'll be cash incentivizing um, to encourage um, you know, the, the sales staff and the dealerships to really engage. You know, we, there's, there's some money on the line where they can, they can make some more money by selling EVs over uh, electric vehicles. Um, they're also going to do some analysis for us on how effective this kind of thing is. So probably in a year or two, we'll be back to report on that. Everybody, I think, is interested in what's effective in promoting electric vehicles. And also, they'll be consulting us on different areas that we may have interested in at, interest in at SMUD. So if we're thinking about a new program offering, they'll advise us on that. So I get input from George and especially from Guy from time to time on the kinds of things that are being effective in other areas, we might bring Plug in America in to consult and to help us understand you know, what the impacts might be. Um, um, also, to provide ongoing dealer support, so Plug in America will be a resource for the dealerships that are part of, of the dealer engagement program, available to the sales staff if they have a question. Um, and I'll kind of go on to that, uh, so in some of that in the next slide. Um, which really uh, involves the, what, what Plug-in America calls, they have a, a you know, kind of a patented plug, store, plug Star platform. And that consists of online resources, and this stuff is online right now. You can go to Google Plug Star, and you can see here there's a car buyer and a dealership uh, portal there. The car buyer, this is kind of a shopping assistant. So if you're new to the EV game or you're doing your research, you can click on there and it'll take you through a series of questions. You've probably seen other similar tools. This one pulls a really nice suite of tools together. Uh, it would ask things like, you know, how far are you going to drive? What are you going to use this car for? You know, is a hybrid right for you? Is an is a all battery right for you? What kind of daily habits do you have? And it'll take you through the vehicles and the different features and the different uh, ranges. Um, but it really takes you through a really nice experience, one thing to the next to the next. Talks about the incentives that are available, the environmental impacts, the cost of ownership, uh, even the cost of financing. So it's a it's a it's a pretty slick deal, and it'll actually bring you step by step right into okay. Now you have all this information. You want to find out where you can buy one, and it already has all the dealers in the area listed there. But the goal, and I'll maybe uh, skip ahead a little bit here, um, is to, when, when we're doing this training, when Plug in America is doing this training, is to produce what we refer to as Plug Star certified dealers. So these are dealerships who have had a number of, of their sales staff go through the training, one day training type of thing, 
Um, also have committed to certain things like having uh, some dedicated employees, uh, dedicated staff, uh, to so that anybody coming on uh, the property will have somebody that's that's you know pretty much an expert. Um, also working at some you know supporting smut events, uh, EV uh, events, which of course are all designed to promote electric vehicles and hopefully result in more sales. Uh, so that's the plug the PlugStar platform is something for both consumers and dealers. The dealership portal is for these PlugStar certified dealers can go on, it's a, it's a log on with credentials and everything, it's not just open to the public. Lots of tools on there for the dealers to use, the, the sales staff to, you know, the commonly asked questions um, and to, uh, to just have good online resources. They're dedicated toward the dealer, toward sales staff. Um, there's a lot more that's going on inside of there, but those are kind of the, the bottom lines. So we're, we're supporting both the, the pur purchaser and the, and the, uh, the dealer. Uh, with the shopping assistance and the tools and knowledge base, plus the fact that these folks will have staff that's available uh, to pick up the phone and, and call. Our program goals with dealer engagement, um, really loosely, uh, without going into metrics, specific metrics, is to educate and train local dealer staff in all things EV. This is just helping the staff understand, you know, what is it that the consumer is really interested in. Some dealerships are really strong in this, and some dealerships are not really that strong in it. But it's not uncommon. There's a lot to know about a lot of cars, right? And so we want to do our part to, to help educate. And that, of course, in turn, really has a benefit on SMUD customers who are going to dealerships, getting the right information that they need. Uh, we also want to produce PlugStar certified dealers. They'll have a, a special place. Uh, so that somebody who goes onto the PlugStar platform goes and does their research and all their work, um, comes to the end and says, hey, do you want a PlugStar certified dealer that has had training and who really knows what they're talking about? Click here. It'll take them right through to make an appointment at the dealership uh, level. Uh, to incentivize dealers and sales staff, I mentioned that before, to promote EVs. Um, we, we know that, uh, you know, there are certain considerations, you know, when, when, when selling an EV, um, that it, there may or may not be as much uh, of a financial incentive for, for the dealer or for the, the sales staff. So we're going to try to bridge some of that gap, too. We also want to promote robust dealer participation in SMUD events. So I think uh, many of you have been to our ride and drive events and have supported those. Um, Lots of fun, by the way. I'll put a plug in. I, I, I noticed George had up on the agenda. We're, we're having a ride and drive out at Arden um, starting tomorrow. It'll be 11 to 4 tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, 11 to 4 each day. And we'll be giving out a, uh, for everybody who comes in and does a ride and drive, we'll be giving out a, a free state fair ticket. So it's a pretty good deal. So come down uh, as a couple and each take a drive or a ride. And you got free admission to the state fair. And again, I would encourage that we need um, at least they would like to have six to eight static display vehicles that are owner vehicles around right at the ride and drive site where we can be there as volunteers. There are a few of us that got on as paid uh, interns, uh, but the rest of us will be hopefully solicited as volunteers. So don't be shy if you will and are available Thursday, Friday, or Saturday or any part of those. Uh, talk to me before you leave about showing up and I'll get a name down and, and again they're going to be reserving parking spaces right at the ride and drive for static display vehicles for owner yes, so if you're not sure exactly what that means looks like maybe you have that question that um, the static display is you bring your EV down Hopefully it's washed, and uh, <laughs> and you just park it there, and you bring it, bring a little lawn chair, and you can sit. And the people are very interested in your experience um, as a as an EV driver because you have the real world experience. You know what it's like. You know all the answers to the questions about charging. Uh, I can't overestimate. I probably don't do this enough. Um, the the impact that SAC EV has had at these events on really moving the needle and getting people interested and engaged in electric vehicles. It's a very powerful gesture. It's a powerful tool to be there and to be a resource 
And for those who have been there, it's kind of fun too. Uh, we contract with Charge Across Town to do all the logistics. So they're the event planners and they go out and buy pizza or burritos or sandwiches or something. So we'll feed you a lunch while you're there too. And, and we have water and, and shade and stuff like that. Yes. It's at Arden Fair Mall, and it's kind of right out on the outside of Sears, about by Forever 21. I, I don't, I don't know which direction it is, but it's toward Arden Fair, uh, toward the Arden, be Arden up Way. From nine o'clock, so if we get there at ten for the action at eleven, yeah, it'll be pretty obvious. For you. Yeah, if you can, just go down by the Sears and you see it. Yeah, and if you can be there no later than ten thirty, we really love. But. Um, but uh, again, talk to George too, so, so that we can expect you. And, and just to be clear for those who haven't participated, you know what you do with your car is completely up, it's up to you. If you want to just get locked to really be in it yep. and just stand by, that's fine. Or open the doors that people sit in it. They can't drive it; they'll learn to drive it. Yeah. It's, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. We basically here's the difference. Guy usually leaves his Model X open doors, lets kids crawl through it. After uh, three years ago, <laughs> watching that happen, I leave mine locked. <laughs> <laughs> Choice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, the Model X is a huge hit at the auto show with the Christmas dance. It's just a highlight. We had all kinds of media coverage of people watching uh, Guy's car. But uh, y your folks' generosity uh, is so appreciated by SMUD, and, and I want to say thank you for that. It's not only appreciated, but it is effective. It makes a real difference. So when you come out, um, it, it's just fun to share your knowledge and expertise. makes a big difference for uh, people who have questions. So I, let me interject. I want to quick take a quick survey again. How many of us are either now driving a Tesla or will be driving a Model 3 in the very near future? Hands up. That's a bunch. Okay, so here's why I'm asking for that, and I want to, in the context of John here with SMUD, one of the suggestions and observations and problems with Tesla superchargers is that you're sitting there for 30 to 45 minutes and generally there are no garbage cans at the superchargers. Or toilets. Or toilets. Well, we can't do much about that. They're often close enough. But, you know, here's a group proposal which I'd like to, I, I move and I'm looking for a second, that we encourage SMUD to perhaps provide garbage can service at the superchargers. <laughs> Put a big SMUD logo on the side of it? Yeah. yeah. No. Because you're the one selling the electricity, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the implications for from our branding group on uh, putting our name on trash cans. Is, I'll, I'll throw that out there for him, though. <laughs> there is a supercharger in Gothenburg, Nebraska. Wow. It has not only a trash can, but a squeegee by it. <laughs> nice. Well, maybe because they have bigger bugs in Nebraska. I think it's also because it's way out in the country. <laughs> We, the, there are superchargers out at Arden now, aren't there? Are they open? They aren't open yet. They're not open yet, okay. Which we can't, many of us can't understand why because we've been driving by for the last four days religiously and they're all the tapes down, but they're not turned on yet. They're Strange. Not turned on yet. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully they will be tomorrow with an EV event going on there. Arden Fair Mall, down by the Sears. Out. Behind the Sears. Well, it's not behind. I don't think so. I think it's. Eight of them are in the garage. Oh, the superchargers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking about our event. Yeah, we're not in the garage. It's actually supercharger, not just the level two. Yes, here. Oh. Sacramento, again, Sacramento is one of the most basically incredibly lucky places in terms of owning and driving a, a Tesla as an electric car. Because we've got Natomas superchargers now. Arden Fair will be open in the next day or two. Two out in Folsom. Palladium, Folsom, Rockland. And two in Rockland. I mean, they turn off the old ones? 
So let me wrap this up real quick so we can move on and I'll also take some questions. But, you know, this is an important point here to, to encourage the, you know, the dealerships are also just, uh, just essential in these ride and drive events. We look at them as education and outreach events, but what we're finding and we're hearing back from more and more dealers who are participating, they're saying, um, hey, we get, we're getting people come in and say, hey, I test drove your car at uh, one of these events and they end up buying or leasing. So we're really gratified to see that these are turning into sales. We have survey data. I wouldn't call it, you know, uh, you know, uh, research data, but it, but survey data that uh, that suggests that 10 to 15 percent of the people who ride or drive a vehicle end up buying one within three three months because we do follow up surveys three months after with the people who give us their their contact information, and of those we follow up with 10 to 15 percent have purchased a vehicle. So that is, I mean, that's a real impact. And of course, that's great for the dealership. It's not a really a sales event, but they're able to, uh, to uh, you know, pass out the card and to talk, to talk to customers. We're really trying to educate and give them the opportunity to just experience. We all know the power of experiencing and also seeing the difference between um, a perception of an EV before and after. So we do a pre and a post survey on iPads and we see a huge jump in the perception, so it really just makes things click in people's mind. Um, so that's what we're trying to do, and that brings me kind of to the final point here, um, that if you have a special, I know a lot of you folks are talking to dealers on a regular basis. Um, if you have a special relationship or, or someone um, that is a good candidate, and I'm not talking about for our events, but I'm talking about for this dealer engagement offering, it doesn't cost anything to the dealer. I think there's only upside to it other than committing to some to some training, but it's real knowledge training by experts who have been in this industry for a long time. So that's my email address, and you can shoot them to me. I will forward those on to uh, Plug in America, and they're getting getting ready to start their recruitment efforts pretty soon. Just a second, Eugene, and uh, and, and I want to hear from you. Um, but we're we're going to be starting our first round of training. Um, I, I believe about in September um, and then going into another group in October. Our goal is to get 12 per year trained and part of the program. Okay, we have time for a couple questions. Uh, nominating a dealer, do they have to be in a smart territory? No, they don't have to be. We are really, tr yeah, we'd really like to focus as much as possible in, in smart territory, but no, I don't think we're going to, unless we get overwhelming interest. But yeah, absolutely. Please, you got my email address. Just email me the contact information and who, because I'm gonna, I'm not doing this myself. That's why we've hired uh, folks like Heath and uh, <laughs> to plug in America to, to touch base with them. What other questions can I answer? Yes, sir. You're mentioning EVs throughout the whole thing here, and you mentioned hybrids earlier. Are we going to make sure that the dealers understand that it's everything with a plug? Sure, absolutely. Does say plug star? Yes, yeah. It's it's all about plug-in electric vehicles, um, and uh, and so they'll be training all the way through. Just the differences in jargon. A lot of the sales staff have a fair idea of this, but it's surprising what's not known, what's not understood. Leave the difference between a plug-in hybrid, and you get people say, "Well, does this thing use gas at all?" No, it doesn't. No gas cap. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Appreciate your support. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce our next presenter who's going to be talking about this great new toy. We've got a lot of TV time over the last month or so, and uh, this guy wears multiple hats. Uh, basically, however, I'm going to share with you that, you know, he may be telling us he's really, really busy for the next three weeks, but I'm not going to believe him because I'm going to bet that this guy has got his face glued to the TV for about three hours a day because in his earlier life, he was a professional bicycle racer. Guess what he's got to be watching, because I've seen the mementos around his office right here. And again, he's 
the general manager here. He's the general manager out at Volkswagen in Roseville and also over in... So we have Audi Palo Alto. Okay. So he's a very busy, spread thin man, but we're lucky to have him. This is one of his other investment interests. Uh, this is Craig Quisenberry. He's the general manager here on all of those other places, too. Well, thank you. And, <laughs> and an interested, except I don't, I don't see where he went, uh, interested dealer uh, to sign up for Smud Plug. No, Smud uh, Plug. Plug Star. Okay, don't want to get that wrong. It works either way, right? Actually, it's right here. Back to you, I just read that. Um, well, thank you. I, I'm really grateful that you guys can use this facility, um, that you can take advantage of the space that we have. Um, we love it here, I mean, in the sense of not just the dealership, but the area, Sacramento, and the fact that uh, Holman Automotive, who owns this dealership and 38 other stores across the nation, um, provides this opportunity for a lot of groups to come in, whether it's Chamber or uh, SAC EV or, or anybody else who needs to use it. So uh, very grateful for that, grateful that you guys are here. And it's a, it's a real privilege that I get to talk about this, uh, this product that we're gonna, we're gonna cover. For many of you, so, or a few of you anyway, you were here when I initially spoke about it. Um, that was a real impromptu uh, dialogue that I had. It was toward the end of a, of a meeting that we had. And um, I, I had never been to a, a meeting here, and I thought, wait a minute, they got to hear about this product, even though we didn't have it yet. But I knew it was coming down the pike. Um, Ten years of development went into this. Um, so uh, I'll introduce the product. Um, all of you are into cutting edge technology, so uh, I thought I'd, I'd bring out something that uh, might remind you all of what we used to think technology was, mm -hmm. right? Um, pretty wild. I, this is the first iPhone that I got. Uh, back in the day. Don't know why I hung on to it. I guess uh, Gazelle or one of those services didn't exist back then. Pulled it out of the box yesterday because I thought, I'm gonna, I, wanna, I wanna look at what technology was to us. I, when did this come out? Anybody guess? Ten years ago. Okay, 10 years ago, right? But, but for a lot of us, when we look at this, it's like, I mean, this was it. This was the deal, right? But, you know, as we get older, you need something much larger because the <laughs> eyes just don't work, so. Uh, but I thought it was really cool just in my hand. I was like, I can't believe how small it is. I showed my employees. They thought it was an iPod from back in the day. I'm like, no, this was not an iPod. It didn't even exist back then. So it's, it's interesting to me. There you go. It's interesting to me just how technology has evolved. And uh, kind of like you guys, I've always been into technology, partly due to cycling and sports um, on the good side. Uh, but because uh, there's two sides of technology in that sport. Um, but. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've always been interested in that, um, and in, in cycling, technology has evolved a lot. In the 80s, we went from just regular spoked wheels to flat spoked wheels to carbon fiber <coughs> solid discs, now to a full disc rim with varying sizes. Um, Told you. You know, it's, well, and so technology, the point I bring up is it just helps us evolve and, and in that sport become a lot more efficient, effective in cars, vehicles, safer, easier to drive. A uh, lot safer, actually, in terms of the, the developments that came about. So um, I share that with you because Reviver um, and the founder of this company spent 10 years working on coming up with a digital plate. So basically, he took an idea that was, uh, wherever I put it here, the iPad, right? And, and it wasn't long, actually, after he was thinking this would be a great idea because he, too, had an iPhone. And he thought, It'd be really interesting if you take an iPad when it came out and put it on a car and make that a license plate, right? And I'm sure a lot of us at this moment are going, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? It's the first thing that came to my mind. And, uh, but legislation was very challenging because license plates um, throughout the nation are controlled, um, in essence, not just by the state, but by the counties they're in. So if you can multiply the number of counties per state times the number of states in the nation, because you have different fees and different usage and different availabilities that can be done throughout the whole thing. And then it's aggregated up into the Department of Motor Vehicles, right? So it becomes very, very difficult to take an idea like this and go, okay, got a great idea, but I'm gonna run it across the nation. Well, he put the time and effort in, built some great relationships. California being the first state to say, hey, we're in on that. We wanna do this. Um, before I get into the, the real benefits and, and what it does for us as consumers, from a state level, it's, it's actually an amazing device because 
um, it does provide, good, bad, or indifferent, a little bit better revenue flow for the state. Right now, they don't have the little metal plates that they would have to worry about if this becomes adopted at a high level. In other words, a lot of use. Um, but something else it does is, presently, when a vehicle is roaming out there, it's, it's somewhat, until law enforcement gets near it, it's pretty much anonymous, right? That car could be owned by that person, or maybe it isn't, or maybe the tabs are a current, or maybe they're not, or maybe it's up to date on certain standards, or maybe it isn't. So this provides a really nice benefit, not just for the state, but for consumers to know, hey, that, that's legitimate, okay? And I'm going to get into some of the, the real technical aspects of this in a little bit. But suffice it to say, this is now legal. Um, it is out on the road and benefits to us as consumers. Automatic tab renewal. Now, I know for a fact every one of you are going to be bummed out that you don't have to go stand in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles to get two little adhesive stickers to then go to the back of your car, lick your thumb, get it all, try and get it as clean as you can to stick those stickers on, right? You'll miss that experience. But it's automatic tab renewal. So much like a lot of the services we do today, it's controlled by your mobile phone or mobile device, or you can do it as a desktop. You store your credit card information there. Tabs are new automatically. Life's good. Okay? Pretty cool. Um, Real-time uh, customization. So we're going to cover that in a little bit. Um, favorite charity, college or sport, can also be shown on your plate. And what's really nice is if you went to, let's see, you went to Chico, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, hold on. Don't tell the whole story. So he went to Chico. Okay, so he may have had like Chico's emblem in there, right? And then, but then you went to Sac State, right? No, forget Sac State. Okay, sk um, skip them. But then he changes it to uh, Warriors? Michigan no. State. Michigan State, okay? So he changes the logo to Michigan. You can change it any time. You have full control over what's on your plate and displaying. Um, personalized message banners. So this is something we didn't know, um, any of us really actually, is, is you look at the bottom of the plate, it says Bruins. So that little lower line is totally customizable. You'll see it says dmv.ca.gov. Uh, That's not actually required to be there. Um, that message line was put there because they didn't know what else to put there. So they put, they just put that there. They thought, hey, that's pretty good. I mean, what else can you put it? This can be on it, but it's customizable by you, the consumer. So at the present, we're going to talk through how many of those customizations you can make. But for example, you can put on there tomorrow morning, I love the Warriors, right? Or you can say, looking forward to the Raiders season, or, or whatever you want to express as your personal uh, chant of the day, if you will. Um, background colors of choice. So right now, you have white and black. You've probably seen this rotating. Um, you can get it, and, and literally, you can change it every day if you want, every hour, for that matter. Um, company name and personalization, I'm going to talk through that. So as you've seen this rotate through, or as you've seen on the cars out there, um, before they're licensed, it actually shows Cooney Chevrolet or Cooney Cadillac if it's on a Cadillac. If it's on a used car, it just says Cooney, right? So you can create any type of customization in the future editions where your company can display or other companies can display or whatever you want to do with that space. Um, GPS tracking and security and geofencing. So it does have that component built in. Again, that's something you would just control through your mobile device, Android or Apple. Um, so a lot of features and benefits. So next slide. I've never, I've never not had the clicker. It's kind of cool. Um, the plate presently is California only right now. That means you can drive anywhere in the nation with it. Uh, my daughter actually was just recently up in Washington State on vacation. She saw a California car driving over Snoqualmie Mountain Pass with a Reviver digital license plate on it. What do I get as dad? The plate's on in Washington already, so she was really excited about that. Um, it was just approved in Washington this week. Um, the, the test or rollout schedule on that will probably be coming up very soon. Um, California, we're already approved. The next two rollout states will be Arizona and Texas. Both those states have approved it. Um, from a company standpoint, they wanted to make certain that we've uh, made a few other moves here in California first. And then you see the other states, uh, Florida probably be next. And, obviously hitting high density, high traffic area states at first. Um, presently, 1,000 plates are on the road. That milestone was just passed last month. We're real excited about that. Um, that was uh, quite a deal, 1,000 plates in one month to be adopted by consumers to be out there and, and physically pressing on the, on the cars. Sacramento, city of Sac, uh, bought 25 uh, Volt, or excuse me, Bolt, uh, I should know better than that, Bolt EVs. Uh, to put in service 
um, and they put digital plates on them because they wanted the ability to track the cars um, and control use of the cars as part of the uh, thing that they were looking to do. But the other thing is SAC wants to brand themselves as a city of technology. And so they got right out there in front of everybody, including San Jose, and uh, said, hey, we're going to put digital plates on our cars, which is pretty cool. Um, the product itself, because you will have questions, the product um, is multi-layered, as you can see up on the screen. Um, it is very, very uh, well built. It is not built where it can be destroyed very easily. Um, the glass product that they use is called dragon tail glass. Uh, Gorilla glass is something most people are familiar with. Glass anymore is just a brand name. It just depends who's making it. Um, but it is basically a hardened glass so that it is designed to be pretty much bulletproof. Um, and uh, it's a bi-stable uh, monochromatic display. That word always challenges me. Simple way to think of it, think of your Kindle, okay? Which means when it's turned off, when it has no power to it, it just stays static right where it's at, and it doesn't change. Requires zero power. So when your car's turned off, there's no electricity being used on this at all, and it never changes. If somebody were to remove it from the car, it will automatically erase everything, much like an Etch-a-Sketch would, um, and it would notify you that the plate has been removed. Once power is restored to it, providing it hasn't, that it's been removed properly, that is, then it'll go right back into its normal function or rotation at that time. Um, it comes in 16 shades of gray, meaning that's the color choices of today. So if you think back to this old technology product, can't believe it's old, when this first came out, we weren't looking at the robust colors that we're looking at today and the vividness that we have or even the screen size. Um, this too will evolve over time. Um, I don't think it'll be a rapid evolution because uh, quite frankly, it's, it's something where it's more being focused across the nation. But over time, you certainly can look forward to a full color type version of this coming out down the road. Uh, but I think it's pretty safe to say between now and the next three years, this and or slightly modifi modified versions of this is what we're going to be looking at. Um, RFID. So that's one of the neat features of this. Um, if, and again, this comes down to personal security. Um, and I think for everybody in this room, we have probably a different viewpoint on that than maybe other people might. But RFID allows law enforcement to identify your car without actually seeing the plate of your car. Um, RFID is going to become the standard going forward in 2020. Um, the, the concept there being, uh, they have the optics that they can look at your plate while they're driving down and scan to see, you know, plate, plate, and see if there's anything amiss or a foul that's driving down the road. The problem is they can't see the cars behind them. And if you're going through a parking lot or a parking garage, the car's backed in, you really can't see it if it doesn't have a front plate or if it's a car behind a car, they can't see it. RFID is a broadcast signal unique to each plate. So if your car, for example, was stolen, but it's in a building, okay, and they can't see it inside the building, the RFID will broadcast outside the building and say, that car's right there. So it's kind of neat. It's, it's a little bit better than satellite tracking in the sense for law enforcement. It gives them clear, accurate information to the actual car and who's supposed to be in that car real time. Um, so that's kind of it. It is, that's what we're going to be talking about fast track. That's one of, there's two things that are my favorite, parking and fast track. We're going to talk about both. Um, uh, R-Connect Mobile. So, much like these mobile devices, you can, con you can control it either through desktop or through your mobile phone. Um, it is real time. Uh, there's about a 20 minute cycle delay for it to broadcast to your car. Um, there's a, a feature on the plate itself where you can speed that up and make the change immediately if you want. Um, but it is all either mobile or desktop based um, at convenience. Payment, tracking, digital certifica uh, certification on the plates, they're all very unique. No personal information is stored in the device, so in the event it is taken, there's, there's nothing there. It wipes itself out, so essentially they've, the, the theft, if it actually occurs, would be they just took a very expensive piece of uh, dragon tail glass and technology, and, and, but it's basically useless at that point. Um, and... Uh, Let's see, like I already covered the payment and the trackability, and it has 24-7 connectivity. So whether your car's on or off, it still connects and it checks to make sure that plate's still there and notifies you in real time. Next. Um, so current features, uh, we talked about the license plate. Uh, actually, I probably duplicated this, the backgrounds. 
Um, oh, one thing on personalized plates. So personalized plates, everything's good on those so far, but unless you have hearts or hands. Uh, they're still working on getting the hearts and the hands done. That'll probably be done soon. The plate can do it, but it's, there's a, a little delay in getting hearts and hands approved. So um, some of the challenges that you fight, right? Uh, banners. Um, so presently, there's 93 of those messaging banners approved. There's actually more than that. I think when I looked this morning, it was 127. Um, at present, what, what the company is doing is creating personalized message banners. So we did one on yours, which was I love running. I think? Yeah. Yeah. But I want Buffalo Chips Running Club. Right. So it's real simple. So like he wants Buffalo Chips Running Club. And we're in, keep in mind, we're in the early stages of this technology, right? When this product came out, um, they made a lot of fast enhancements, a lot of fast development, but it was never fast enough for us, the consumers, um, to help us enjoy the product more. Same state we're at uh, with Reviver. They're making changes as quick as they can, but if there's something you want, like what he wants, it's real simple. You let myself know or any authorized retailer. We email IT down there in, in uh, Foster City. A day, maybe three at the most. It's right there. You hit it, you're good to go. Eventually, that will be user driven and not uh, product driven. Um, the delay there, of course, is anybody could put anything. That may not be so good, right? So, so it's, it's crawl, walk, run approach. Yeah, well, and they may, you know, DMV may ask what Buffalo Chips means, but anyway, you know, they would cover that at their level. Um, does have start, stop, accelerate, just meaning that when the car is stopped, um, that the, the vehicle, the plate knows that, it acknowledges that the car is stopped. When it starts, it goes into a static uh, display, meaning that the plate itself, when the car is in motion, will display full time. When the car stops, there's the ability for advertising to display and rotate through, okay? Um, so, and I know, that first time I heard that, of course, a car dealer, right? And I'm going, that's right on, I'm gonna have my name everywhere. Um, but I thought about it, and I thought, well, that's kind of cool because if I were a small business owner, which I have been in the past, that's pretty cool. I'd love to have my coffee roasting company display or, uh, or an image display of my choosing that represents me as an individual or my business or, or maybe a friend's business, right, that I'm trying to help out and champion their business. So that's pretty cool that it can, that it can do that. But there's other messaging elements that it will rotate through uh, that, are, that are equally as important. Um, detached pop-up ads. Pop it's, life is about pop-up ads. Um, uh, detached plate, um, it will, so if you, I don't know if it's probably shown this at some point, but if the plate is detached, it will actually put on there that the, uh, it, that it's stolen. And actually it only display that for a short period of time and then it just goes dark. Um, but if your car's stolen, you hit it on your mobile app and it'll display that the whole time. So it's pretty obvious to everybody. Um, commercial use, this is a big game changer for commercial use. So. If you think of those 16 wheelers driving down the road and they got multiple plates on the back and weight ratings and, and all the stuff that they have to put, much, much better for them because now they're gonna have a product or a device that as they go state to state to state, because it is GPS tracked, will change. Um, it'll, it'll notate or announce the requirements of that state. Very important, this, and, and I can't emphasize, I didn't realize on a commercial level how significant this is gonna change commercial driving. To, to become certified and licensed in each of those states obviously is expensive. And there's lots of loopholes that drivers, you know, commercial drivers can get around and companies can get around to manage costs and expense. This product is gonna eliminate that l l virtually. There are states that have raised their hands to say, hey, you know what, on the commercial side, we're gonna take on the costs because this makes that section of transportation much, much better and much safer uh, for, con for the consumers, the people driving the roads, but also for commercial trucking. So um, pretty cool. I mean, I think that's a, a really big benefit. Uh, warranty on the product is a year. Um, you know, the whole hardware installation, the whole thing. Um, if anything were to happen beyond that, obviously the company is still at a small state, growing, reputations, everything, product uh, cycles and, and customer engagements, everything. Um, I look to this company, I know the owners and the, and the key investors in this, there, uh, and actually I encourage you, if you have questions about it, go to their website, uh, which is reviverauto.com. Um, you can see the people that have invested in this. It is, it is a very, very well committed product. 
And I think you, you know, if you choose to be an early adopter of this, I think you're going to find out you're extremely well supported. Um, what else can I share with you? Ongoing banner uh, creations, we talked a little bit about that. We, we look to see those on banners or online banners being available. Um, we're not quite sure when that custom image, where it'll be in your hands, you can create your own banners. Um, we've tried to put a date on that, but at this point, we're still kind of in the air on when that'll be available. Cause and sport plates, so like the Bruins or whatever college logo, we look to that to be in this quarter. Um, the state's already fine with it. It's about trying to figure out how to implement it and make that go forward. Uh, Geofencing and stolen is actually live right now. Uh, that just got released, that edition. Uh, special interest plates, so that'd be your breast cancer awareness, veterans, foreign wars. Um, again, already approved by the state, trying to figure out how do we uh, communicate that information in a discernible way to DMV through the channels. Um, but that will be live very, very shortly. Um, same thing with campaigns. Vehicle recall notifications. So that was originally designed to be displayed on the plate, but they've since stepped back from that. But we went, wait a minute, that's kind of cool to have on your mobile device, right? Because we don't know when we have a recall until somebody, the dealership usually is the one who tells us you got a recall or you get a postcard, right? And you say, I want to schedule an appointment. They say, that's great, we don't have the parts. Um, so, but it'll notify you on your phone. So that's kind of a neat attribute that you can get notified on your mobile device. So then you can contact your local dealership and schedule that needed appointment. Um, rotational advertising. It's, it's already designed and built into the current product. Um, the launch date on that one's a little soft at this point. We're looking toward the end of this year, but it could be Q1. Uh, I think a lot of that is just trying to, dis to discern on a state level um, the comfort and the, the execution on that piece. We, it's certainly been well reviewed and it is definitely gonna come forward. Um, but we're, we're going a little bit slow on, on the rollout on that piece. Um, monthly tab uh, payment. So that's kind of an interesting piece. So that I look to see probably Q1 or Q2 of next year. Um, what that means is as we roll into 2019, there's going to be a, a change in our license fees. I, I don't know if all of you are aware of that, but there's a slight tax that's, that's being impacted upon vehicles. Um, and, and the thought here being is, you know, when, you, when you're paying a license fee and it's 100 bucks or, or even 200 bucks, that's manageable for some, for some people when you get to three or four or 500 bucks, as I experienced in Washington State, that's a pretty significant investment, especially depending upon where you are in life. So this product does have the future availability, it's actually built in now, to spread that over time. So in other words, rather than pay your payment for your license all up front, it can actually be broken out and just automatically debited on a monthly basis, which the DMV can't do. So. Nice feature um, for people that are, you know, younger. Maybe they're in college or in school, or young family, or you know, they're retired and they just those new license fees are just too much. So, fast pass, one of the one of my favorite things. Um, so, starting in 2019, that RFID thing that we had spoke about earlier, um, that is going to be used integrally with the fast pass piece of Department of Transportation. They're going to get away from that that puck that you put in your windshield or throw up on your dash and then put back in that magical box that you put it in. Um, they're going to they're gonna move away from that and move to a different product um, to track uh, bridge tolling. Um, this actually already has it built in. So as that rolls forward, um, when they release that in those drive throughs this has already got it so you don't have to do anything. Okay. So you're going to... Okay, I'm going to close real fast. Three minute close. A car dealer should easily be able to do a three-minute close. Um, backgrounds we talked about, temp tags. So starting in 2019, that's not it, but you've probably seen it. There's a hard temp tag that the dealerships will issue. Um, and this kind of goes to one of the key points that I have that I think is the coolest part of this. You know, when we, we sell a lot of cars here, and we're, we're very lucky and fortunate to be here and do a great job. Um, but here's what you get rewarded with. You buy, for example, one of those Corvettes out there or even a Bolt, and you spend 40 or $140,000, and we give you this wonderful little inexpensive plastic frame. I think it costs us like $1.12 last time I checked. And then we reward you later with somewhere around an 82 cent piece of tin metal that you bolt with the cheapest screws you can get from anywhere onto the back of your $140,000 or $40,000 car, and that's your banner. That's your personal banner. I, I advocate that I think this is a lot better. When you look at it on the back of a car, it's clean, it's sleek, it actually makes sense for the car. 
what I like best about it is, it is when you buy a car, a car represents you, your personality. Everybody in here owns a different car, different color, different interior, different features that you want. Those are reflections of us in life. And so my perspective on this product, your plate really reflects that as well, especially when you look at personalized plates. This takes it to a whole nother level, and eventually this is probably going to become the main standard. I think almost everybody has agreed with that. Uh, price for the group. That's the close, right? Um, $7.95. You know what? That is not right. I took this off the wrong slide. $6.95. And that is, I'm not making that up. This actually is the wrong slide. Uh, six, yeah. I know. I know. No, I can, I can, and I can tell it's not because it, because it doesn't have the, your guys' logo up there. So I looked at it, I'm going, well, $7.95 actually is a good price. We are currently, if you go out and look at our cars, I think it's, I think they're on there at twelve ninety nine or eleven ninety nine, somewhere right in there. And and we've made price adjustments, um, not because sales aren't robust. Sales are very robust, um, but we've just looked at costs alignment and serviceability, and we just want to make certain engagements high. So we actually have been making the prices a little bit lower, um, and the company's been very helpful with that. Um, but for the SAC group, for the EV club, it's six ninety five. You do have an activation fee in installation. The installation can run anywhere from a hundred. To $200, I just put $150 up there as, a, as an average. Most times it's $100. Bucks. Don't take this wrong. Teslas take a little bit more time, right, George? Um, so, but that's okay. I mean, it's 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 all right, and and we'll even absorb whatever extra time it is, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it works out really well. So, there you go. I don't know. Yeah. If that, time just quick. Um, at risk of uh, a little bit here. How many people have when they bought their new car? Cried a little bit when he had to put on that white and now that red right. sticker pasted around the side. How many just straight right if you were really unhappy about having to put that sticker on your car? Oh, you're, you're referring to the, the carpool. carpool. So um, that's changing too, unrelated to this converse. That could be a whole nother meeting. Unfortunately, that is changing too. Um, and so I, I won't do a spoiler alert because that's a whole movie edition. Um, but the Department of Motor Vehicles made a decision to change those stickers uh, starting in 2019, I want to say, second quarter of 2019. And a lot of those people that are in carpool now will no longer be in carpool, unfortunately, right. or either way. Yeah. Right. So that's going to be pretty interesting. I do anticipate that this, no, obviously not soon, but I, I do anticipate this will probably tie into that sooner rather than later. So one more question. How mm -hmm. does this relate in cost to like load jack? Great question. Um, comparable, you know, when you when you go to buy LoJack, you're probably within a hundred to two hundred dollars similar. Difference being, um, LoJack, of course, and and I love the product. We used to be a strong supporter here. Um, used to be LoJack, you couldn't if your car was stolen, you didn't even know where your car was. You had to call the police, and only the police could find your car. They have since changed that model, making it mobile friendly, which this already is mobile friendly. Um, but I think the bigger part that I've seen is there's a lot of products that are coming out for theft tracking. Um, what's nice about this is this traces to where the car went because most of them wind their way into a shielded garage. Um, I don't know if LoJack has gotten to that point where they're doing tracing. But this would actually replace the LoJack. Oh, completely. Yeah. There's there's no need. So, so, so the message, do I hear the implication of what you're saying is that if you have a device like that on your car, you also, when you're getting your insurance, may get a slightly reduced insurance rate. Right. Yep. Well. Yep. And the thing is, well, Jack, you don't even know if you have it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Right. Zero yep. Until you lose your car. Yeah. yeah. True. Any other questions? Oh, there's one in the back. Oh, I got one. Yeah. You, you see me right after this meeting. We will take care of that. And what just are the two plates? It's for a great, that's an excellent question. It is one plate for the back right now. Um, remember I talked about that dragon tail glass, so we're still working on the testing and functionality of a front plate. As you can imagine, a little rock on a highway is, is like a bullet. Um, we have tested it, and they work. Um, I actually have delivered a couple people, too, just on a trial basis. And so we're just waiting to see. We want to make certain that even if the plate could sustain it, that it looks good. I mean, it's, it, that sounds silly, but for the investment, it, it's we want it to look good. It's, you know, it's representative of that company, but it's representative of you. And so it's really in a testing phase. Eventually, I would say within the next 24 months, you'll be seeing double. I, I think states actually, though, are going to 
probably beat it to the punch and say, you know what, with all the technology that's here, we don't need a front plate. Because there's, there's really, honestly, with the technologies here, there's no need for a front. And it doesn't look good. Yeah. So. Oh, thank you, too, sir. Yeah, do you have that check? Well, I don't, because I needed a document from you guys. But so he's getting it. He's, he and I are in dialogue, and so we're going to have that shortly. OK. So we'll, we'll have a symbolic. Uh, we will. But I'll go to your next meeting, wherever it is. OK. So um, did Ben French ever get here? Ben, come on up. So this will be our last uh, component. We're running slightly over, my apologies. But um, the commentator coming up is the coordinator of the service program for automobile repair at American River College. And he's going to introduce and describe to us the student that has been selected. Saki V, for those of you that are not regulars at our meeting. Saki V, a couple of years ago, in cooperation with Clipper Creek, um, has funded a $1,000 a year scholarship for a automotive service student at ARC who is pursuing a specialization or at least some kind of focus in servicing electric vehicles. And um, Ben is going to tell us about the student. Unfortunately, uh, Justin couldn't make it today. Uh, but to announce the awarding of that scholarship, which will be funded to the American River College Foundation for a specific assignment to Justin. So can you tell us about Justin? Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Ben French. I'm the department chair at American River College in the Automotive Technology Department. And I'm here uh, on behalf of the, the scholarship. I'll talk a minute about that. And I'll also talk about just what we're doing in automotive education in general, because my job is to make sure that there are qualified folks to work on your vehicles in now and in all the years to come. So that's a, that's a pretty big, important job. So. First of all, um, I want to thank Clipper Creek. They're a great sponsor uh, for this scholarship, and they're just great for the community and electric vehicle community in general. Um, my campus and in my department, we have multiple Clipper Creek uh, charging stations, and it's really neat that they were able to partner with Saki V to make this scholarship available. And, and again, for those of you that aren't intimately familiar with the electric vehicle world, uh, Clipper Creek is one of the major names in providing uh, home vehicle chargers. And what is incredibly, uh, I think, appreciated by us, its factory and its headquarters are in Auburn. So it is actually a local company, and by supporting their products, which are as good, if not better, than anybody else's, you're supporting local businesses. So anyways, uh, again, thank, thank you to Clipper Creek. Uh, Justin, the student that we selected for this scholarship um, this year, he was actually uh, one of our Automotive Students of the Year. He took our Alternative Fuels class this semester and just did an outstanding job. And in it, um, he helped rebuild several um, uh, City EL electric vehicles that we had donated that were kind of a, a basket case and we got a few of those going and we're going to do a, a high school outreach with them. Um, he's not in the automotive industry right now as a technician. He's looking to make that switch. It's a little bit hard when you first make the switch. Um, he works in some, some facilities management stuff to, to make the jump into automotive. You usually go through a dip and pay to kind of get back to where you were. Um, so he's gearing up to do that, and unfortunately he wasn't able to be here tonight. But I talked to him today, and the plan is is to get him at our next meeting and maybe bring one of those city ELs that he got going again for you guys to check it out. It's a really neat old electric vehicle. If you haven't seen one, it's pretty cool. So I'm excited about that. Um, outstanding student goes well above uh, the call of, of duty to help others in the classroom and to also share uh, his knowledge and passion with electric vehicles. So I think it'll be a very deserving uh, uh, recipient of the scholarship and put those funds to, to good use. It is a challenge if you're going to be a professional uh, technician, whether you're working on electric vehicles or conventional vehicles, you need a substantial investment in tools and equipment. And so that will be put to good use towards that. So 
Um, so that that's about the scholarship and about Justin. And like I said, we'll get him at the next meeting. So you folks, make sure you come to the next meeting to, to meet him and, and see one of, one of those city ELs that he worked on. Um, other than that, I just wanted to let you know what we're doing at American River and really in our whole region to help train technicians to, to be electric vehicle ready, okay? Um, one of the challenges I've had at my campus is for a, a lot of time I was the only instructor. And so what we're doing here in, in a few weeks here, um, second week of August is we're gonna have an instructor workshop. We're having instructors from all over come to our campus and learn about electric vehicles. Um, we even have some high schools participating. We're launching a, a, a program out at Davis High School with Robbie Thayer in the auto shop out there. He's gonna get a switch electric vehicle, which is kind of a custom electric vehicle for, this, for the students to work on there. So we're, we're really trying to train the trainers so that more knowledge can get out there of, of how to service and work on electric vehicles. As you guys are aware that the job market is, is pretty fierce right now. In fact, one of my problems has actually been filling classes, not because I don't have the students, but because the students get hired out before they get through all the classes. They get a few classes and before they get their certificates or degrees, boom, they're, they're out and they're working. Um, and so that's been a, been a challenge. And so we had our electric vehicle uh, courses and, and hybrid vehicles. We had those kind of staged towards the end of our program. And so we're, we're reevaluating that whole strategy because more and more students aren't making it to the end just because there's so much demand in industry. And so our new approach is to try to integrate a little bit of, of high voltage safety knowledge, a little bit EV, I guess you could say, into you know all of our classes, even, even our introductory classes, and even um, going down into the high schools. I mentioned Davis High School. We're also gonna do a dual enrollment program with Natomas High School that has an auto shop and San Juan High School that has an auto shop. So we're really trying to kind of keep automotive education going at the high school levels to expose young people, you know, to, to, to cars basically and to, to technology. So um, that's, that's kind of in a, in a nutshell what, what's going on. We're, we're really trying to focus on training more instructors about electric vehicle technology so that they can in turn teach their students, whether they're at the high school level or the college level in the, in the greater Sacramento area. And that's, that's pretty exciting. We have some other big things um, that will roll out probably in the next couple of years. We're gonna try to set up a mobile training lab that can do advanced. It's almost like a shop on wheels. I have the trailer built. We're gonna have to get a tow vehicle. So, so maybe we'll, we'll have that here at, at future meetings. But we have a lot of exciting things. So like I said, I take my job of making sure that you will have qualified people to work on your vehicles very seriously. And we're, we're working really hard to, to make sure that uh, you don't have to worry about you know, who's working on your car. It's gonna be someone who, who is trained and qualified to do so. So thank you. And the, the scholarship that is awarded is the Tom Dowling Clipper Creek Scholarship. Um, Tom, who has generally been a regular even attending these meetings as his health has been failing, but I don't see him here tonight. Uh, Tom is literally one of the um, original people who built their, uh, their EVs and who helped the National EAA set up the standards for charging. Um, you know, his electrical expertise is just amazing. I mean, I'm blown away when he was one of the, the leaders in the board when I came on. And um, again, his failing health is a tragedy to all those who know him. But that's why we have the scholarship named after him. Because again, the charging expertise in this community would not be anywhere near as deep or rich as it is had he not been part of that community for 30 years or more. So again, um, Tom Dowling has been an amazing person, uh, both in this group and, you know, the scholarship recognition for him is just a, a minor gesture on our part for what he has done for all of us. Um, I think at this stage, I'd also, I'm gonna leave out the last little section. I had a fill in here, uh, but we have plenty of time. We're now over, but I'd like to, 
mention a piece of what I was going to include, and this is coming actually from Eugene Dunlap. Uh, what I was going to be talking about was a set of highlights on the master uh, zero emission plan for 2018 to 2022. And I just got an update this afternoon as I was checking my email that relates to this. And so here's the trivia question, which is a trick question. What year is it? Come on, what year? What? So you saw the same email? So the correct answer is we're already at 2020. California, as of, and it's actually in 2016, because CARB has just finally reviewed their hard data on greenhouse gas emissions that were dated for the end of 2016. They, we, hit the 2020 goal for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The 2020 goal was hit at the end of 2016. And this is coming from what this state is doing, what CARB is doing, what all and each of you are doing in the new lifestyle, the careful use of the world's precious resources, and the adoption of electric vehicles. So thank you. That will be my parting word as I hand the mic and the but symbolic baton to Peter. And the meeting here is adjourned. We're in social time.